A pleasant good evening and a warm welcome to LNTV News Live. This is a 30-minute presentation of major developments about Liberia and other parts of our one world. It's Friday, the 20th day of March 2020. My name is Zokwe Beslokon and anchoring this edition of the program LNTV News Live. In our headlines, Education Ministry directs that all schools in Liberia remain closed until March 31 this year. House Speaker Buffer Chambers calls on health workers across the country to provide equal care for all patients in the wake of the fight against coronavirus. Grand Crew County Senator Dr. Peter Coleman denies news report that he refused to adhere to the hand washing protocols at the Capitol building and away from Liberia Guineans are poised to hold election that's referendum and parliamentary elections this Sunday. These stories plus many more developments are all coming up in the program Ellen TV News Live. We take a short break to be back with the faces of the newsmakers. Welcome back to Ellen TV News Live. We continue with the program. The Ministry of Education says classes remain suspended until the end of March 31. The decision, according to a release, is based on the expert advice of the National Public Health Institute of Liberia and Phil and the Health Ministry. The ministry said an indecision on the reopening of schools will be guarded by the nation's health experts. The release quotes education authorities as saying the decision is a preventive measure to reduce the risks of coronavirus spreading. Meanwhile, the education ministry is encouraging families to keep children reading and studying at home. Liberian health practitioners have been urged to provide equal care for people suffering from different illnesses to ensure or remain healthy in the face of the coronavirus outbreak. House Speaker Buffer Chambers said people suffering from other diseases should not be forgotten because of the coronavirus outbreak in the country. Speaker Chambers spoke at his Capitol Building office Friday when he addressed a team of journalists. In my view, this is where Article 13 of the Constitution comes in, called uh, public health security. And so, uh, you know, if now that can be invoked, you know, I think that uh, everybody now will be guided uh, to see how we collectively can show that uh, this menace in society can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, gotten rid of. Uh, so I want to say that uh, the best we can say that we take cue uh, from all of what is trending. We are able to clean our environment because now you cannot uh, specifically say what is Corona, you know. And I also want to uh, appeal uh, to the health practitioners that uh, the other diseases or sicknesses uh, should not be uh, forgotten, uh, you know, just because of uh, the, the coming in of Corona. You know, so uh, let us work on everything. Let us be meticulous. And those persons wanting uh, services must be patient uh, because of now things are overwhelming. Meanwhile, Speaker Chambers has stressed the need for Liberia to ensure resource mobilization as a means of helping the country deal with crisis. So in my view, what is simply uh, the case is that, uh, yes, we I may appreciate uh, help. Liberia always encounter problems, 
Liberia needs to remain uh, perpetually buoyant uh, so that uh, economically we can be independent as we are threading that goal of independence. Uh, as I said, this government is a government of achievement orientation or orientedness. Also, uh, this leadership is a supportive participatory one. So in concert, we should work on what will be meeting the needs uh, of the people and serving them adequately. Uh, we saw the case of Ebola, help King, uh, but uh, again, Liberia will be on the path where there will be uh, enough foundations uh, so that uh, there will not be a semblance of what Maya, you know, uh, activities on the ground. So I want to say here and now that uh, we are thankful uh, that uh, the world now is conscious, you know, uh, the health consciousness in my view must transcend, to my extent to economic consciousness, uh, so that every one of us as children of God can enjoy all of his endowments. Grand Cru County Senator Dr. Peter Komon has refuted front page Africa report that he refused to adhere to the hand washing protocol at the Capitol building. Senator Komon said as a medical practitioner, he is a frontliner in the health sector and at no time will he be engaged in any act that undermines health protocols put in place to contain the spread of the coronavirus. He spoke in an Ellen TV interview Friday. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. You know, I, uh, I felt... I felt a little disappointed by that information, you know. As a matter of fact, what you see at the level of the Senate and at the legislature, I, I chair the Committee on Health. We were the ones that organized that whole thing, you know, about washing hands, about reducing the number of visitors, about uh, well, keeping the social distance, you know. So we, we put all of that in, in place. Why, why would I, of all person, you know, get up uh, and will not want to wash my hands? And I, I, it's unfortunate that uh, Trump Beach Africa didn't talk to me because I arrived at the Capitol building at about 9.25 that morning. I was one of the first legislators there on the ground. I had just come from uh, a meeting, a coordination meeting at Enfield office, uh, uh, dealing with the same coronavirus. And before I entered Enfield office, I had to wash my hands. We all had to observe it, you know. And I arrived at about 9.30 at the Capitol. In fact, the doors were shut. So all cars had to stop get out, you know, before you go further. If you didn't wash your hands, they would not allow you to enter. And I was driving my car. So <laughs> how would I have entered without washing my hands? And there were so many people out there, they saw me, I washed my hands, you know, and I got in my car and they opened the gate for me and then I, I went through, you know. So I was, I was really astonished. I was perplexed when I saw that article from uh, from page africa because it's something it, it is something touching to see someone who chairs the health committee the senate committee chair on health also spoke of his involvement in policy decisions made by the government aimed at fighting the coronavirus disease as chairman of the senate committee on health I'm, I'm an integral part of the policy making level for health for this country and especially once you have a health threat that threatens the population I must be involved and not only I alone but all members of my committee are all involved so we, we've been uh, attending coordination meetings at the ministry at Enfield coordination meeting on the advisory uh, committee the presidential advisory committee on containment of uh, the coronavirus so uh, we've been quite busy okay.
over the last few weeks. Have you been to your county since this whole thing began? No, in fact, as a matter of fact, I came back from my county about, what, 10 days ago. I was there, and uh, right after I came back from my county, I, uh, uh, the, the alarm started, but the, uh, the, uh, our country has been in this state of preparedness over the last six weeks. So while we were in the county, we... The government of Liberia has threatened to arrest any public official found violating sanctioned health protocols. Government said the move is intended to provide safety for the Liberian people amidst the ongoing health crisis. Information Minister Eugene Namwe made the pronouncement Thursday at the Ministry of Health press conference. One hundred percent of all of the health protocols have been laid out. Any official of government will breach even one inch of the health protocol will be arrested and dismissed by the president. Any official, there are no separate cows regarding the health protocol. The president also mandated the national security apparatus not to flout any inch of the protocols. You arrive at the airport or at any border post, you submit yourself and cooperate very fully. We don't want any leakage in our system. So the mandate has been given to the security apparatus to use the necessary means to ensure compliance. There is no new case of coronavirus reported in Liberia so far following tests of 17 high-risk contacts associated with the two confirmed cases. According to the acting head of the National Public Health Institute of Liberia, Dr. Musoka Fala, contact tracing of the index case has been successful with the help of community residents. Dr. Fala spoke Thursday evening at a health ministry news conference in Painesville. Very well in status. The next important thing to happen was to determine all of his contact and recycleize his contact. We realized quickly that there were 24 hard risk contact. I will start at this juncture to really thank the various communities and members of the communities that gave us step up as to expand our net. Overall, we have had 144 contacts within the last 48 hours. To the one most serious, to the one of the serious contact, we are taken to isolation, which is one of the best to manage coronavirus, given the fact that we know that it can sometimes be spread asymptomatically. And in fact, that it is a respiratory problem disease, the goal was to isolate all of these contact into institutions so that in the event that they are sharing the virus, the rest of the population can be protected. And so from one of those contacts were taken, and specimen was known from the immediate close contact, one of the contact of the five initial contacts, one of them came positive. We came the second case. That case was nearly isolated the treatment center at the Fortin Military Hospital. As you speak, both of them have been very well. Um, we see one more time a day with a practice in this case. And we also took 21 of the close contacts, the high risk contact. Yesterday, we were able to test 17 of those contacts. The result came later in the night. 16 of those contacts resulting as negative, one of them as indeterminate and we are repeating the best. In order to protect the population, we decided to move our risk contact to a secure environment at the military hospital and do the blood draw in those communities. Well, if you have just joined us, this is a reminder that you are watching Ellen TV News Live, a 30-minute presentation of major news about Liberia and other parts of our one world. 
It's Friday, the 20th day of March 2020. My name is Zokwe Beslo Conan, anchoring this edition of the program Ellen TV News Live. Let's take a short break to be back with more developments. Welcome back to Ellen TV News Live. The head of the Imam Council of Liberia, Ali Krai, is calling on government to close down entertainment centers just as churches and mosques are scaling down on mass gathering. Imam Krai is at the same time urging all Muslims to pray at home as Friday Juman pearls are now suspended. He made the disclosure Friday in an interview with this station. This is what we have come up with for now. So we will be educating people. You know, when you say these kinds of things, normally some people will drag their feet, etc. So there will be vigorous education campaign in the communities around the mosque. And I just want to add, as a way of appeal to the national government, now there we are undertaking severe restriction in the religious cycle. And you know, like I the way I began, mm -hmm. that this pandemic proves that God is the only Almighty. And he's the only superpower. We have to turn to God. Now, if religious centers, places of worship, including churches, mosques, are being restricted so severely, the government must be very vigorous in restricting other places. Like I said, other places like entertainment centers. I mean, because it is ridiculous. To be restricting places of worship and the entertainment centers are just open. It's like an affront to God. You know, so we have to be very careful. We have to be very serious. So the government should take uh, stern measures to ensure that everybody falls in line. Meanwhile, Internal Affairs Minister Vani Sirleaf has been providing detail about the setting up of an interim leadership of the National Muslim Council of Liberia following the crisis. Since 2010, the Muslim Council um, election were held for four years. In the four years, she have been four years. Four years, exactly. And then four years, people elapsed, and then uh, they stay in 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 in, in power. Um, some of our community members, some of our brothers and sisters in the community, got aggrieved, and then they expressed that through um, communication to me, myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, brother Usman Diallo, who is the radio advisor to the president, that these people are overstaying. In fact, we overthrow them. So, <laughs> so I told them that overthrowing of the leadership is a kind of a strong voice. So we okay. should uh, be kind of a little bit moderate. What but happened? we we got them together, you okay. know, and then uh, we we intervene, and then we found out what was the real issue is that they have overstay. So if you overstay, you have to step aside. And they agreed that is led by Chef so Omaru Kamara. Sure they agree that easily. Yeah, but with a lot of negotiation, a lot of talking took place. Uh, Rosinibility, the legal counsel of the Muslim Council was part of that. Uh, and then we, I met them several times. Uh, so we agreed that they will resign mm -hmm. and uh, we'll put in an interim leadership. Uh, the interim leadership were drawn across the different organizations and some of them were optional if you wish to participate because uh, we cannot force anybody but of course some people came forward and they, they, they agreed parties the office of margibi county district 2 representative ava jones has begun the distribution of essential medical drugs and materials to public health facilities in the county Making the disclosure Friday, Representative Ava Jones said the medical drugs and materials were provided by Project Safe, a United States-based organization. Representative Jones said the gesture is timely as it would help health workers combat the coronavirus. 
Yeah, and luckily for us, we were blessed. Um, prior to the, uh, let's say, the coronavirus reaching, reaching our shows, we were blessed to have a 40-foot container from Project Safe, the American-based organization that uh, arrived in the country on the 5th of, I mean, on the 25th of February, 2020. So as we speak currently, we are distributing those uh, material, medical material that includes drugs, includes um, uh, nose masks, includes gloves. Those are essential, uh, let's say, material that I use uh, in the fight against the coronavirus. We even have some PPEs. So what we, what we were able to successfully do is to ensure that the full public health facilities that is within our district get some of those materials, including beds, including um, small drips, including the PPE, the uh, hand gloves, and even, uh, let's say, also, I mean, uh, automatic oxygen tank. So as we speak currently, we were able to deploy those items to the various public facilities within our district. And then we went beyond our district by even extending it to rainy. We carried a total of six oxygen machines to the Rennie Hospital and they had a welcome in even, uh, let's say, the presentation, the, uh, the head of the medical team of Maggie County said, as far as he concerned, based on their inventory taking days before we got there. Uh, Grand Bassa County Senator Jonathan Kaipe is urging Liberians to use lessons learned from the Ebola crisis to combat the current coronavirus in the country. Speaking in an LN TV interview Friday, Senator Kaipe called on all caregivers to ensure self safety while creating awareness for others. I think um, this is a reminder of our immediate past as we reflect on the Ebola situation. But in one we analyze, I think this is even more uh, risky, considering that it's an airborne disease. But I think what we reflect on is that we, the people of Liberia, have had such an experience. And I think we have learned in the past. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm forgetting. I think the practices of hand wash, the practices of preserving, you know, the different health regulations and policies, I think it's something that we must really know as people. Uh, I was just this morning with the Watch Commission as chair of the Watch, they made the Watch Caucus in their meeting. And I told them the first thing is to make sure that they are kept safe in order to go out to save people. Mm -hmm. So that is, to all of us, we must be able to be kept safe before we can go out to help. Once each of us get a message of being safe, then of course we will be able to move forward. So that's my observation. People should not overlook this process. People should not feel um, in a way that you know, it's something that is going to pass over us. We must participate in a pass as a pass over us to make sure that we can we can we can survive. But so far, two cases, I think is is something that we can manage to, to protect. So the entire incident management team, the, the team of experts from the you know um, the the, the ministry of health, the health. Ampil, the, the the whole technical ministerial working members of the legislature like you know the different health committee that the come on the rest of the guys who begin to work to ensure that we develop the roadmap the political will and you know the plan that will lead us home and i think as we do so um wash has the one of the pillow mm -hmm. that they're going to deal with of course that has to do with you know the whole issue of wash uh, sanitation and hygiene and all of that and of course there are other preventive aspects that other health people are going to look at but by and large, I think we as a government. Meanwhile, the chairperson of the National Civil Society Council of Liberia, Loretta Popkai, wants all Liberians to join hands in defeating the disease in the country. So let me just say that coronavirus is real and it has spread to many countries around the world. Liberians must also see the need to follow all of the major of health protocols to stay safe. And some of the protocols include 
washing of hands as often as possible, avoiding crowded places, stop shaking hands, cover your nose and mouth when you are sneezing or coughing, and they are also saying to us to not wear masks. You're going to wear masks when you are sick or taking care of sick patients. So I really want us to adhere to the Ministry of Health protocol so that we all can prevent ourselves, families, and communities. So let me just re-echo that coronavirus is real and we need to follow all of the preventive and precautionary measures by the Ministry of Health to keep safe. So I still see people are still living in fear and people are still panic about the issues because um, this situation is something for every one of us to have a special sense of direction because it has become a public emergency and an international concern. So, like Several marketers in Raleigh Town Market staged a peaceful protest against what they called unreasonable fares being imposed by the Marketing Association. Speaking to LNTV News Friday, two of the agreed women vowed to further their action if their plats are not addressed. So why they all the things that we don't know. Don't know. We are as if we ask them to say they want me to come up with a, with a, with a ruling. So when I have a question, when they're having a decision, they don't know. They don't want to do that. 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 They can't pass. They can't pass. We tell them we don't agree. I want to do that. They don't want to do that. We don't agree. They want to go back to them to tell them. Tell them that we don't agree. I want to do that. They want. Why are they go back there? They don't go back there. We don't know. Yesterday they came. They made their announcement that they coming for them. Only one money. But we ask our leader, then the leader then said, "We go over the counter with our ruling. They get nothing to say." So I want to make this around. We left the leader there. We came to meet our president. But when we get this money, she say we let the same people. She will not talk to us. Now she walk and she never says. I want to go there to talk the street this morning. For his part, the manager of the Raleigh Town Market, Jones Gibson, denied adding any extra amount on the regular fees the marketers pay. The market people got up before the market meeting, uh, said that uh, they were not, they, they can't pay, they can't pay, so I began to follow up for them, what was the problem? So they said that they will not pay. I said, why you will not pay? They said the money that management talked about will not pay. So I said, say you for a minute, the national government has passed an instruction to have a daily disease in our country. They are advised that people should not gather in group. So I don't want anybody to gather in group. No thing that protesting, gather in group, what I think what needs to be done is that get back to your marketplaces. Get your leaders who are representing the various commodity session in front. Then, then come at my office so we can discuss the issue that you're talking about because they are the direct representative. So there's a meeting you see I'm having with the leader to ascertain what's actually unfolding in the market. Actually, it's the policy of the entity. Look at annually the membership register for the team. That's the policy that I've been in the system. But they say that registration that registration has increased to five hundred. That money is five hundred now. The last registration we gave for 2018 was 500, 2019. Internal Affairs Minister Vani Sharif says the rest of the country is on high alert in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak in Montserrado County. Minister Sherry said county superintendents and local governments are implementing all the health protocols set aside to stop the virus from spreading. He spoke Friday in an LNTV interview. 
as a government of the Republic of Liberia requested budget from the different ministry that is that are cardinal and key in the fight of this virus and that was submitted i'm sure that we will get some support from the government whatever funding that be made available by the government to send it to the counties because if you the response i want us to look at it for the past experience of ebola mm -hmm. where we have some influential traditional leaders on board the women leaders the strong young people the youth leaders going in communities sensitizing our people you know telling them to wash your hand if you go in a if you go in the community and telling people to wash your hand you have to at least have a pocket to give them and some little detergents that will encourage them to continue to follow uh, suit but uh, what is even encouraging daniel is that because of the past ebola experience people already doing those things we just need to push them a little more and give them some support. People are not taking the virus lightly. This I need to be a bit more specific in terms of, is there particular funding that's going to superintendents, emergency funding, to be able to carry out some of these measures? Mm -hmm. Yes, people are following it because of the past, but any emergency funding that's coming forward? Uh, that we anticipate that to the budget submission that we made. Uh, to the government of Liberia, that has not yet materialized. So we look forward. Uh, How much are you requesting? Uh, well, to cover the 15 counties, around 200 plus thousand uh, dollars. That. Let's now bring you our foreign development. Guinea's internet and phone call services are set to be disrupted over the weekend, as the country hosts two key hosts, telecommunications company Guinea broadband has announced the firm said the disruption would be caused by planned maintenance work to on the sea cables that would affect the whole region not just guinea the west african nation is set to hold a referendum about a proposed new constitution and parliamentary polls there have been months of often violent demonstrations against the referendum. If passed, it would allow Afa Conde, the 82-year-old president, to seek a third term in office. Well, with that from the foreign scene, this is how we come to the end of the program, Ellen TV News Live. Many thanks to you for your viewing role. Many thanks to all of our reporters, correspondents, technicians, switchers, and editors for making this package a success. LNTV News Live is a production of the television department here at the Liberia Broadcasting System. Before we take a leave of you, let's now recap our headlines. Education Ministry directs that all schools in the country remain closed until March 31 this year. House Speaker Buffer Chambers calls on health workers across the country to provide equal care for all patients in a wake of the fight against coronavirus. Grand Cru County Senator Dr. Peter Como denies news report that he refused to adhere to the hand washing protocol at the Capitol building and away from Liberia, Guineans are poised to hold referendum and parliamentary election this Sunday. Well, this is how we come to the end of the program, Ellen TV News Live. On behalf of the entire television crew, my name is Zokwe Beslo Konen. I've anchored this edition. Good night from Pinsville. Thanks for watching.
Hello everyone. We know all that the situation with the coronavirus is a very serious one. And we need to put heads first. There are five key tactics to tackle the coronavirus. And I urge you all to follow with discipline at all times these five key tactics. Todo comienza con tus manos. Por favor, lávate las manos frecuentemente y si es posible con una solución de alcohol. With your elbows bent, please cover your nose and mouth if you sneeze or cough. If you're using tissues, dispose of them immediately. Pour le visage, évitez de toucher les yeux, le nez et la bouche. Cela peut empêcher le virus de rentrer dans votre organisme. In terms of social interaction, take a step back. Stay one meter distance minimum from everyone that coughs or sneezes. If you feel unwell, stay home. In some countries, isolation might be advisable for healthy persons too. Please follow all instructions from your local health authority. So please keep yourself informed at all times. Follow these recommendations and support the WHO in their efforts to tackle the coronavirus. Together, we will win this difficult match. Introducing Royal Butter Bread, delicious, nutritious, ideal for your health and vitality. Carefully prepare on hygienic conditions. A royal butter bread is brumet free, lasting longer than any other bread. Royal butter bread is produced by Hope Bakery Liberia Incorporated, producer of the best family choices in town. The royal butter slice bread, royal butter round bread, royal wheat bread, and you name it. Hope Bakery Liberia Incorporated is located on AB Tubber Road in Pinsville. For wholesale supply, contact them on 775 522 Zero three zero or zero eight eight zero three four three eight seven three. Hope Bakery Liberia Incorporated, the King Bread Maker. Divorce Court. Well, this man spends about two three thousand dollars a week on marijuana. Ho 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 up. Two three thousand. A week? A week, yes. He, Not a month? No, he buys about two ounces a week. What kind of weed do you smoke? Uh, <laughs> you know, that, uh, that California good. <laughs> Where'd you get that kind of money? Hey, I have a prescription for it.